if it, okay, let's say it spins 10 seconds. How is that related to you? Is, is that like bad or good? You see what I'm saying? What are we? How well, if you're, you're blowing a pattern that's flat and it's blown apart a little bit and you need it to spin slower, it's not a bad thing to have. You got somebody who has very slow ball speed and maybe some rotation and they want to use an extension of the ball, it's a slower spin time. It's something that's going to delay before it gets there. So that's something. And the opposite holds true, but it's a two or three second ball and you got a guy that throws at 20 mile an hour and he has 200 RPMs. You need it to spin around its axis pretty quick. Otherwise, it looks like as Mo would always say, the hook's going to hit the mechanic. You know? <laughs> 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 That's what I was doing. That's great. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Well, the, the question is, how much can you... And again, I know it's going to vary by polar and polar. So the question, let it, correct me if I, if I got this. So, <coughs> so, if you start with a consistent surface every, every time, before practice, before every tournament, something along those lines, and then you're, based on what you have in front of you, maybe you make some changes. But what would be a drilling change that could correlate to that? What you're trying to say, yes. um, and I, I'll, I'll ask. I'll, I'll give a, a bit of an answer, and then I'll ask uh, if anybody has any further thoughts on this. It, in my opinion, it, it really depends. Obviously, it depends on the ball, and you've, you've already said that. But the drilling changes are essentially permanent and can be much greater, and I think are usually much greater of, a, of an effect. And obviously if you went smaller and you, you went to different places, you can minimize the drilling change as well. But in general, you can do much more, this is a pretty major tweak, but you can do much more minor tweaks up and down through the, through the surface. You can do pretty major changes up and down through the surface, and it's temporary. Whereas you, with um, you know, a balance hole, you can do quite quite the major change, and then again you can go back and you can tweak it from there. But um, these are, you know, this is a double thumb practically. Yeah, so it's going to be a pretty a major male. change, but um, <laughs> it just, you know, you have to be confident. You have to be here, and I don't like this ball. Different surfaces, still not doing it for me. All right, let's go here, and then now I got something majorly different. And then you can go up and down from here to give you some more leeway. But this is just a, a major one, yeah. step. One other way to play with what you're talking about, I think, is through Powerhouse Blueprint. Um, really, it, I think it's the only consumer product out there at the moment. Um, I'm not, big, or, I'm sorry, Hank, I'm not super familiar with the BLS thing because I haven't got to play with it a whole ton. And what it would show you from a layout standpoint. So maybe you can jump in if, I, if I'm missing something on it. But um, on, on Blueprint, can we go back to the flare slide? When this one, ha. Ah. Okay, so when you when you do the simulation on blueprint, yeah, you can the, the little squiggly line that are under the finger holes and thumb holes on the right hand side of the slide, that's the axis migration. So you can play around with that um, digitally and see see how much effect you can have on it through um, layout changes. So we did this to get a get a cool flare pattern um, and you can play around with that as well. So like I said, this was like probably six, I think uh, 60 by four and a half by 30, and we changed it around a couple of times in order to get a flare pattern that would show up pretty on the screen. So what I mean, and I'm not, I'm not talking about the elite guys like, like Schaefer and Weber and, and all those guys. I'm talking about our average elite bowler. And you, and you said something before that, that I kind of agree with where they have a lot of balls that have the same shape that they like. So if we can affect that much of a change just by surface, if, are we better off giving them that shape layout that we like, they like, and then altering the surface for them, or does it make more sense to change layouts? It used to be, I, I, I guess you guys used to tell us 70% of the ball's reaction to surface. So we're in there. And I personally, would, I would go the surface route, the ladder that you talked about. Now, again, the customer's always right. If he or she comes in there and like, I want something different, but you know it needs to be close to what he or she likes, you know, you can give them the different layout, give them the balance hole, but eventually you're going to have to make it close to what they already have. And if you track all that, you've got a lot of good, good information to get there, and it'll, it'll be different, but it'll be what he wants, and then you have a happy customer that comes back. Yeah, I mean, you can you can even look at this 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 ball and the next one. They're not laid out the same, um, but it's giving a general similar pack uh, pack shape to the axis migration. So it's gonna it it. I think this is a hard question because it really is going to vary based on course, you're based on cover stack. There's a lot of variables we're talking here, and I don't know if we can make it 
super simple one or the other. Um, just because there's so many tools that you have to play with. But that's one thing I want to point out about that, is those two don't have the same layout and they get to give the bowler that similar axis migration shape. That, pretty much what I've said, and I'd say the same for what Nikki said, it, that is kind of a personal opinion. And it can be done either way. I think this is the easier way, the more logical way, and gives you the most versatility. After, after you go over it, yeah. Because once you put holes in it, you're kind of stuck yeah, with it. Yeah. And it feels good, but it's not doing exactly what I want it to on the lane, so let's play around with it. Good question. Anything else? Yeah. Um, core shapes nowadays and layouts. Like, you have the player that likes a certain layout, and you put that layout in the different core shapes. Nowadays, does that layout change based on the shape of that core? Um, as far as, I mean, like, you don't expect this ball, let's say it's a um, 60 by 5 by 30, and you have a certain shape you're used to seeing. And you put it in this ball, and then you put it in this other ball that is um, very similar. Do you expect a different ball reaction because of the shape of the core? Do you see what I'm saying? They're looking for a certain shape. Am I making sense here? Well, it still goes back to the speed of the migration. I think where's Ballard at? What? Oh. Oh. <laughs> because, I mean, this is a great question. She's, I, asking, I, I can't she's asking about layouts. She's yeah. asking if a player has a layout. We know that many, many players have what we call a sweet spot. Correct. They have a, a group of layouts that works for them based on their speed and rev rate. Yes. We know that many players aren't good. Above, well, the elite players are good at some changes, but not a lot. We've seen that already. But many of that have Del Zartura rep for score. So, um, so what happens is many of these players do a lot of the same layout. So they'll go through different balls to, to, to change where the shape occurs. You know, if you have response times and covers and cores, and a lot of players like to stick with similar layouts because they know the shape, but they let the ball dictate the motion, and then they use their versatility in how they actually shape it in the surface. Ball speed changes to, to actually control when it goes and how it goes. And it goes back to Ken's question, yes. was if you have a player has a lot of those balls that are close to the same, do you get them too far out of that zone, and do they get, it's, you're acting as a pro shop operator right there, because do I get them out of the zone and then they're unhappy with the ball reaction they just paid $250 for? So you're trying to keep them in that, it's a delicate threshold of, am I keeping them in that comfort zone, but still giving them something a little on the outskirts of the box? And can I adjust it a little bit more by the hole, by the surface, and make it even drastic, more drastically different? That's the tricky part. And the same thing holds true with the tour player. He hates to see a different shape in the lane that he's not used to, Correct. and he balks from it Correct. when he might need it. And, and Del can tell you stories of, when him and Mo first on tour and seeing these different shapes of people going, oh, whoa, 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 you can't, I can't do that. I mean, yeah, so we went from two-piece stuff back then. We were going from two-piece stuff to all kinds of back then. It was considered radical, and the guys would freak because they would see their ball do something, and they just weren't comfortable with that shape. And so I think for the average league lower, though, struck, they didn't care. For the person that's coming to the shop, you got to kind of. I think gear it down just a little bit because as the lane conditions have gotten easier, remember everything tends to roll similar. Um, so um, I hear what you're saying, and you know you get those customers in there that are very detail oriented and they very, you know, they can feel a 30 second in their span. That that guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, it, it's it, it really is use your instincts. It's it's kind of a judgment call, and if, and if a new ball comes out. What I do, even today, and you don't have enough information, don't put holes in it. Call somebody from that company to get <coughs> enough information that you feel confident that you'll make the right decision for that question. Right. It's not fun to have $250 surprises. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that they don't like. <laughs> but you, you do have a little bit of a window, more so in my house shots, than you do for, for, for that. Yeah. I'm going to break down a little further. What, what happens if you have a, a ball that you, you can see? You, 
maybe you need to make a change. What does ball plug have an effect trying to make that change? Yeah, if you've already put the hole in it and you're not happy with it, obviously you can plug it. It's not, uh, density is, is the difference. You know, it's not, it's not the same. And, uh, but it, it still can get you back to more options, is what it comes down to. What's that density do? That's what I'm kind of curious about. It's you know, that. You know, if that balance hole was into the top of the core or side, you know, into the core, basically, you know, you're not going to replace that. And um, How about know, the maybe that doesn't the matter. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. How's that? What about the fingers and the thumb and the hole in your plug and your chain? Okay. It's really Should a lot of contrastive to figure out where it is. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot dependent on the size of the core and size of all the gears. The depth of the holes that you put in there. Uh, in relation to some of the smaller cores, you're not going to affect them as much. Larger cores, they're more greatly affected. But cover stock material and core material and plug material, we know that uh, cover stock material and plug material aren't a gra drastically different. But when you get to core material, they could be. You could have specific gravities that are totally different than each other. You could have you know, one, two or three points higher in specific gravity, which you lost it when you took it out of the ball, so you'll never get it back. So say it was 50 differential, and after you plug it back up, and if you had the luxury of a, a, a swing, you swing and it, the RG value went up, and all of a sudden the diff went down, and you're like, I can never get it back there. So that's the trouble sometimes of the plug ball, depending on the shape of the core, the size of the core, a lot of Does the track going over a plug ball affect it? You know, yes, it's, it's going to, but how much? I would say minimally, and maybe somebody else has some thoughts. I mean, if it's a high flaring ball, it touches it once or twice, but if it's a low flaring ball, it touches it consistently, you might see more of it. And that, more that, of that may also depend on tilt. You know, if you have a very small track, you'll be rolling that. You, you'll be you'll be encountering that more often. So I mean, if they're a, a, a high track player, low, low tilt, then once in you know it's only an inch of 26 inches as opposed to an inch of you know 10 to, inches. Yeah. Sorry, I want to bug Dell real quick for a few minutes. Uh, Del Warren, if you you took your team and you built you took all these forms and you built a spreadsheet that listed them all instead of individual forms. Would they be cool with going through there and be like, oh, well, this one has this much X migration in the wall, and I like this one because of this. I mean, I think we were talking, or I remember a couple years ago, we were talking about a presentation where you've got some people who are really into the numbers and are really going, is that something that you could see doing with some of your players? Yes, uh, but only people like uh, Anneli, who was from Sweden, she's going to be an engineer when she goes back. You have to answer her everything in four decimal points, or she's not happy. <laughs> Brandon Hunt, on the other hand, could care less. Give me the layout, and I'll yeah. go knock them down. So, yeah. And he doesn't want to be bothered by that. Right. So certain people are going to want this information, and certain people, you know, they're they're going to they're going to come to you and say, eh, it, it doesn't look quite right, but I trust you. Can you can you adjust it? And I would just say, give yourself some latitude. Every time I lay out a ball. I try to give myself some latitude that to use a balance hole because even a 51 30 second balance hole position in the right place can make a pretty nice little difference whether you're trying to strengthen or weaken or change the shape you would be amazed so I always try to give myself a little bit of latitude because I know if I have an opinionated customer or bowler you know having that luxury of even if I put it in a place where I, I like it even if I put it in a place where I know it's not going to change it, but in their mind it changed, yeah. that's, you know, that's a goal. And I don't think, is Carolyn in here right now? I don't no. see her for the moment. Okay. So anyways, she was my, she was my guinea pig, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on her for a minute, and she's not here. Um, Carolyn, <laughs> Carolyn is not a numbers person, and she just wants to see the ball go down the lane. When we sat down and did this whole process, she started to get it. And she was like, oh, that's cool. Okay, well, this is why I like this, and this is why I like that, and I'm getting it. Okay, and I can see it now. So that was really a neat thing for her to step up and admit that the engineer was, was uh, showing her something cool, and it was it was a neat process. So even for those that are a little hesitant, that don't want to see all the numbers, the shapes and the pictures will tell them a lot, too. Yeah. 
One of the things that, uh, that we've educated in a couple of pro shops uh, when we did the VLS system and the county access migration seminars was we mark those spots on the ball. You just did it there, right? Well, if you have a customer that like Dell has and, and a girl that's very analytical, many times I tell the pro shop operator, scribe through those three points. So when that person's practicing and they're going out to throw, so they put the piece of tape, they see it migrate at the start, they see where it comes out of the oil, and they see where it gets to. So then they can start to understand their ball motion. So this is, you, you give them a tool. So part of this is, I, I, I would take it one step farther. I would, and some of, your, some of your customers that you know you can mark their balls, put a scrap line on without them getting upset that you're <laughs> scarring their balls. <laughs> I can tell you a Paul Fleming story. <laughs> oh, no. But you got to mark it so they can see if one transitions and gets there real fast and it's only 20 feet down the lane, then you're like, that's the wrong ball right now. So you make them start to understand their bowling balls and the layouts that they have. Half of the battle is how, they have to understand. You're explaining to them it's three inches here and it's three inches here, but we're a visual, we're a visual culture. So put the mark on the ball, tell them to go out and practice and put the piece of tape on their ball so they can see it. We, we do it for a lot of our elite athletes. We do a lot for our tour players to make them understand why what we're talking about in the access migration and why it reads the lane where it does. And it's, and it's really easy. Half of it's seeing it and then accepting it. Because we can tell you all day long. Colors, too. Colors yeah, different colors. Yeah. Different colors because yeah. there's the white, lime green, and neon yellow. And they'll, they'll see it even better and, and love it. And we're all coaches, we all know. We're all coaches and we all we all know different people learn different ways. So some of them are good just seeing that, some of them are good seeing the numbers, some of them need to see it on the lane. They're all different, but if you know your your athletes, you'll know what they need. You'll know what they need to see. Yes. Some of you if you have the opportunity to send them out and have them throw the ball prior to putting your balance hole in it so they can get a feel for the shape of the ball and then you can actually fine tune where you're going to put that hole at from there. Not every pro shop has that advantage, I understand that. But you can get them the basic layout, get them a feel for it, let them go out and throw the ball, mark it if you need to so they can see the reaction and then base your balance hole out there. I think we've got time for one more question. Go down. I have a question that just popped in my head after watching some of the VAL, VAL uh, slides there. Can someone explain to me, just so, because I'm, I don't claim to know everything, but I always see perpendicular lines for VAL. Pete Weber has five and seven eighths axis straight across. Mike Fagan has three and a half inch axis up an inch. So his track's this way. Uh, Wes Malott is actually even a little bit more than him. So why would you want your, beat, your vertical axis line going straight up if people got tracks like this or tracks like this? How much difference does that make when it comes to pin buffers? It's, it's a measurement technique. It's the ability <laughs> because I've had people ask me, I want a one-inch pin buffer because that's what it tells me it does. Well, when you go to measure that, are you really giving them a one-inch pin buffer? Not, enti not, not entirely that. based on that angle. Um, you're gonna, I mean, it's going to it's gonna be close. Go ahead, Hank. I mean, he's itching. <laughs> 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 I'll ask this question. It does make it very difficult. Now, I, I look over at Dale County, you know, I, I just, they can't get the top in there. Because with somebody with that and that more vertical measurement, I mean, it, it does start to throw it off a little bit more. And when you use the really short angles on the back side, you're really getting close. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, long, I mean, about a decade ago, we called it a PAL, right. a parallel yeah. you know, axis line, because it was parallel to the That's what I have to see me, I can relate to that. But it's so hard sometimes for the average pro shops to really get the angle and understand exactly where they're getting it. So a reference point of a perpendicular is much easier to do, and in general, the majority of the population, even if it's an inch up, it's not going to affect it dramatically. Yes. We see it after balls drilled that it moves 10 to 20 degrees, possibly in one direction or the other. So even when you think it, it's it's a tough thing. But when somebody's very dramatic and they're very small and they're they're very vertical, 
I would make take it into consideration and make some adjustments to it. Yeah, I would look at your after layouts at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. It's always there. Wow. <laughs> Good question. All right. Well, um, thank you, everybody, and thanks for your time. And especially, thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Um, I get to spend a lot of time in a lot of different areas, and just having this group of people here has been fantastic this weekend. So I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you very much.